and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to hashtag Al and a special Ramadan series we have with for you guys, episode 12. That means um, Ramadan is Mubarak on us and on you guys, inshallah. But um, episode 12, meaning we're through 12 episodes, 11 days of Ramadan. Uh, and let me just say this, I'm excited, super excited to be here with you guys live from the holy city of Karbala, uh, you know, bringing to you uh, various topics on various things to talk about. Uh, and it's wonderful, hopefully, inshallah, you can benefit from those and, you know, wait and see uh, what the upcoming topics are. But for tonight, it's not a debatable topic. Tonight, we're trying to find out how you guys and the people around the world, the Muslims around the world, celebrate their Ramadan. But before we go and do that, let's go check out what's trending in today's world. So let's go and do that. Once again, we do welcome everyone for joining us tonight. And tonight, um, it's uh, one interesting topic that uh, brought the attention of the co-producer and the scriptwriter uh, was uh, the, the increase in the percentage uh, of the American adults that identified themselves as being either uh, lesbians, gay, bisexual, and transgender. Now, according to a new Gallup estimate, uh, the percentage now is 4.5, which works out to more than 11 million American adults. Um, it's uh, it's, it's 0.4% uh, higher than 2016, which was 4.1, uh, and... 3.5 since 2012. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the rise of increase or the rise of the, the number or the percentage, uh, we don't know yet, but um, for a future question, why is LGBT on the rise? Could be a question for the upcoming episodes or maybe after Ramadan, we never know. Uh, but, you know, we just ruined the, the surprise element. But anyways... That's for the first thing that's was trending. But for another thing that's trending, you guys heard about the uh, Hawaiian uh, volcano explosion, and it's 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 going crazy. Uh, it's not just affecting the homes, uh, but and and not you know a lot of people are uh, you know running away from it. A lot of tourists, but the business in Hawaii went down. Uh, you know, from hotel managers to uh, anyone that has souvenir shops. Whoever has business in Hawaii, in Hawaii um, their business is going down the drain. Um, and even in, in luxury hotels, no one's staying there. Even in the, the, the sleep and breakfast hotels, like the small hotels, no one is staying there. Um, so, you know, hopefully can, they, they can come back, but not anytime soon, because really it did a lot of damage. But let's go and jump in and today's topic. <laughs> Now, tonight marks the 11th day of Ramadan, episode 12 of hashtag al -NT. Um And let me just say this, Ramadan Azim, Ramadan Mubarak to everyone out there joining us tonight. Uh, you know, the, the, the new trend for IHTV, the whole media group from now on is Ramadan Azim. And let's keep it that way, everyone. Uh, let's, let's make a new trend, you know what I mean? But... Ramadan Azim, Ramadan Mubarak to everyone joining us tonight. Uh, and, uh, you know, that just means 11 episodes. That just means we're, we're already a third into Allah's best month, Allah's greatest month, Ramadan. Um, so all we have to do is, you know, 19 more days. That's it. If you, if you haven't fasted for 11 days, you know, try to fast until 19 days. But if you have 19 days left, that's it. We're almost done, you know. Uh, but... <laughs> Yeah, you know, one, one, one joke uh, we'll, we'll get to talk about later on uh, because tonight's topic is very special. Tonight's topic we're talking about um, how are you spending Ramadan. So the phone calls are open from now. Um, so you can call in, uh, let us know what you guys think. Uh, and, uh, you know, but we'll kick it off. I mean, uh, people around the world, everyone, you know, even if you go with, within a city, you'll see different individuals, different families celebrating Ramadan or spending Ramadan in their unique way, in, the, in, in their unique culture. Uh, but tonight, my dear family of Hashtag LNT and everyone, 
Can I? We're trying to find out how are you spending Ramadan in your country? How are you celebrating Ramadan in your country? Uh, we did get a few videos from from around the world of people telling us what they uh, what they've done. Uh, we'll get to show you guys that after uh, in a while, but. Uh, the number to call us at or send us a voice message or a text message is plus 964-774-067-1836 and let us know what you guys think. How or not what you guys think. Share your information with us. Sh share your Ramadanic experiences. Your Ramadanic, if that's a word, uh, your Ramadan uh, your specials, what you guys do, what kind of food you guys cook um, and uh, what you guys do after the fab. Um, uh, what kind of special traditions and cultures do you guys have? Because uh, for me, um, I sleep, I don't, you know, I, I, I wake up half hour before Maghrib time. Um, I, I sleep during the day, wake up half hour before Maghrib time, go get some groceries for the family, some drinks, come back, iftar, then come to the channel, uh, stay up till the morning, and I sleep at 11 a.m. Uh, host LNT for you guys, so there you guys have it. Uh, so for me, um, hashtag LNT in the channel has become half of my life. Uh, it's it's a, it's a good thing, you know. I I, I it's uh, it's my favorite part of the day. Uh, hashtag LNT is is, is changed a lot, uh, you know, f f for me and and for the crew, of course. For the crew, just makes them more money. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but tonight. Tonight, as I said earlier, we're trying to find out uh, what you guys uh, what you guys are doing during Ramadan. What has Ramadan done for you? And is it a special month for you guys? All you guys have to do is pick up the phone, open WhatsApp, another number shown below, plus 964-774-067-1836. Um, all participants, their names will be placed in this bowl right here, in this fishbowl uh, right here. Uh, for the final draw at the end of Ramadan, inshallah, for a chance to win a free ziyarah along with many, many, many giveaways. We're also live on Facebook, so you can go check us out uh, on there as well. Uh, leave a comment, like, share, uh, do all that good stuff. But let's take a very short break. Let me pop open this Red Bull because I'm tired today. Uh, and we'll be back very short. Welcome back. Now we are receiving a few Facebook comments, which we'll, um, <laughs> which, which we'll get to read out. Um, but tonight, um, uh, one of the m nicest things about Ramadan is that every single family uh, spends it differently. You know, we have families, especially in Karbala. In Karbala, if, if you're from a Middle Eastern family, you're having iftar in basically everyone's house. So you barely have a far in your own house. Uh, some people do. They, they like to keep it, uh, you know, uh, within their families alone. Uh, and others, no, they just like to go and, and eat somewhere else. But what's nice about Ramadan is that um, different cultures celebrate it differently. So even for Arabs, it's, it's, it's very easy for them and how they, br uh, they break their fast. Some, and, and I, I've seen this, which is amazing. Um, some don't eat unless every single person is sitting on the table or on the ground on that sofa, uh, but or after they pray. But I've seen someone, <laughs> you know, who he doesn't care if his mom is sitting, his dad is sitting, or if they're not there. On, you know, as soon as they say Allahu Akbar, he's he's that that liban, that yogurt drink or or, or, or that date. Uh, is in his mouth, down his stomach, you know, uh, ready. By the time the adhan is done, the foods are digested. Um, so, <laughs> I, I've seen this personally, you know, I, it's, a, it's a kind of a, a, a funny joke. But uh, a lot of people do celebrate it differently, as I mentioned earlier. You know, Ramadan, just like any other, um, uh, it's not just like any other month, uh, where, you know, people might fast on regular days, but they might break their fast um, alone. But in Ramadan, everyone comes together to celebrate it. Uh, one of the things, the nicest things in Ramadan is, is the Ramadan greetings, where I greeted you guys earlier on in the episode. Um, you know, it's, it's very nice. In Ramadan, if you have a broadcast list, then you don't have to send it personally. Uh, on WhatsApp, we just send one message that goes to like 300 people at the same time. Uh, so, so don't think that it's personal. Like, <laughs> 
if, if you get Ramadan Kareem, hopefully this month uh, is a month of mercy and blessings upon you and your family, or Ramadan Azim, uh, new trend, sorry, yeah, the tr new trend, Ramadan Azim, don't think it's personal because that person might probably send it to another 200 people. Uh, but it's, it's good. It's a good sign that everyone gets to greet each other on this very special month or in this very special month. Um, I have a few friends that I haven't said Ramadan Azim or Ramadan Mubarak to them. So from hashtag LNT to all my friends and everyone out there, Ramadan Mubarak and Ramadan Azim once again. The second tradition um, that a lot of people love, especially myself, um, I love when it's 7, 16, just to break my fast. You know, although I spend it sleeping during the day, which is, you know, sometimes it's a good thing because, you know, as Prophet Muhammad says, no one mu'min ibadah, you know, uh, the sleeping of a, of, of a fasting mu'min, a.k.a. Ahmad Ali, um, is... is, is considered as worship so I'm basically worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, during during my sleep um, so that's that's a good thing so you know uh, it's easy worship you know what I mean uh, you don't have to get up and you know pray but all you, you do uh, your mandatory prayers but at the same time if you do sleep that's counted for you as, as, as worship but um, if you're from the Middle East there's specific ways that you break your fast if you're from a Pakistani tradition um, when I was in Canada, I was invited a couple of times with my Pakistani friends and, and, and we, we, we get to see how they break their fast, especially at the community center. They, they break their fast with, with um, we call it shorba, uh, soup. Uh, the Iraqis and the Middle Easterns, how they do it, they, they, they dates, fresh dates or, or packaged dates, depending on which family you're from. Um, so dates, um, not in a silver uh, plate, but... You know, not not as nice as that, because that's all silver, but, you know, that's probably some, like, uh, UAE family. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but you do find some nice, uh, fancy stuff like that. But dates, yogurt drinks, um, and then after it, they get you the, the, the soup. And after that, you get to feast. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in Ramadan, everyone has, everyone suffers from this thing. In Ramadan, no matter how much you sleep during the day, and how much you sleep during the night, right after you break that fast, and after you're done eating, which sometimes you can't even eat because your stomach is so empty that you know you put a few uh, lugmas in, a few uh, bite, a few bites in your mouth. That's it. You're full, and you feel sleepy. You feel dizzy. Um, so uh, in that feeling dizzy, hopefully no one's feeling dizzy right now because we know some people are breaking their fast or have already broken their fast. But switch cameras. So, in that case, we want to remind everyone to call in uh, and let us know what you guys and how you guys are spending Ramadan in your cities, in your country, in, in you know, wherever, wherever you are, uh, at work, you know, how, how, how are you working in Ramadan? I know a couple of friends in the UK, they, they reduce the hour work time because this, this is funny, this is funny. I, I don't want to pull the message out because uh, they might get exposed, but... Um, one of my friends, I was talking, he was like, how, how are you spending Ramadan a few nights ago? And he said, bro, I have to reduce my work hours and the work hours of everyone working with me so we don't have to see each other a lot so, so we don't become savages. Because in Ramadan, I don't know, for some reason, people get pissed off. I don't know why. They get angry. Um, so, you know, Ramadan is, is a month to, 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 to cool out and chill out. But, you know, a lot of people do get angry in this month. But um, what else... Uh, what kind of what kind of traditions are there also out there? You know, if uh, for Ramadan, when you turn on uh, TV channels, uh, whether religious, Arabic, or you know any channel that celebrates Ramadan, um, we get the fanus, the lantern. This is a symbol of Ramadan. What else is a symbol of Ramadan? Is the crescent. But this is very nice. On the night of Ramadan, they let lanterns fly, or they hang them out uh, in their streets. You'll see that in old villages as well, or new ones as well. But these lanterns go all the way back uh, to nine, uh, 969 uh, AD um, to a pharaoh, where they hung lanterns as soon as Ramadan came. Uh, they, they lighted uh, the path uh, of where people go and come. Uh, I don't know why they only did it in Ramadan. Why didn't they do it in, in any other month but I know they're probably just 
uh, wanting to ease the way and make everyone see the, the street. But it goes back all the way to Cairo, Egypt. But another tradition of Ramadan, especially Iraqis, you all know this, and they're probably playing it right now. Uh, Iraqi games, or not sorry, Ramadan games, uh, it's called Mhabis. Uh, so basically, uh, this ring right here, give me that camera right here. So this, this ring right here, not this specific one. So it, the, the game is called Mhabis, coming from the word Mhabis. So this, this is a ring, um, so meaning the ring. So what, two sides, two, two, two opposite uh, teams, two teams. A guy hides the ring in his, it's, it's like, uh, what's, I, I can't remember that game, we used to play it as well. Uh, where you hide it in your hand and the other team, they choose a person to try and guess what hand you have the ring in. And if they get it right, your team loses and they do points and stuff. Uh, but that game is famously known uh, in Iraq and the Middle East as well. Uh, but switch cameras. Tonight, we would like to remind everyone that tonight is about you guys. It's not about uh, a topic that we want to debate. It's not about a topic that um, we're, we're, we're trying to get two parties to debate over or talk about over. No, no, no. Tonight, share your Ramadan experience. Uh, how are you spending Ramadan? Let's, let's take a very short break and we'll be back very short. Once again, we do welcome everybody. I was trying to get uh, Facebook uh, so we can check out the comments. We're getting a few comments on there. Uh, but let's go check the, uh, the public opinion uh, and what, they've, uh, w what people have said in regards to have uh, sent LNT, what they've sent LNT uh, to share their experiences and how they're sharing and how they're spending Ramadan in their own countries. Salam, my name is Ali Najati. I hope everyone's having a great Ramadan. To celebrate Ramadan, what I do is I cook food with my family. I also go out with my friends at night uh, to different places, cafes, and eat with them. I also watch various movies with my family and just spend time with others and, and helping others. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Hussein from Washington, D.C., United States. I celebrate Ramadan by spending time with family, making a spot for people, uh, reading some Quran, and listening to uh, religious lectures. Ramadan is the month of Allah, and this month we keep offering. The moon is seen of Ramadan, people start preparation for Sayyid. When the time is arrived, my mother woke up and gave all arrangements. In our area, people are starting announcement from the mosque in different style, like read poetry and recite Nas. When the time arrived, my mother gave up the food. After they eat the food, we offer Salat and we said Quran. Then I go to bed because I have to go to office. When the time arrived, Tari had preparation of Tari. There is a special dish which makes from fruits called fruit chat. It is really tasty and delicious. And then after we perform Namaz, Salat, and then we distribute the food to poor people. Hello, uh, my name is Mohammed from Canada, Toronto. Uh, Ramadan Mubarak for you all. Uh, I do uh, help homeless in Ramadan. I give them food, I give them money. I go masjid, pray and uh, read some of Quran, some pages every day. And uh, Ramadan from Mubarak for you all. Thank you. Thank you very much for those who have sent us the videos uh, and uh, you know, special shout outs to the last person, the cutie at the last, uh, who, who sent us that video uh, from Toronto, Canada. Thank you very much uh, for everyone. But uh, <laughs> uh, tonight, are we changing? Yeah, we're changing. Tonight, uh, as I mentioned before, the public opinion tonight is about you guys. So what you guys have to do uh, is open the phone, go to WhatsApp, dial the number shown right now, and tell us what you guys think. <laughs> so I'm tired of saying that, but I'm gonna say it again so you guys can, you know, tune in. Plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six. Uh, if you, if I was too quick, just dial at the bottom. Look at it at the bottom and come out. Anyways, 
to this cam. Yeah. To the other cam. Oh, this one. Oh, all right. So, okay. All right. So, no, today I was confused. Don't, I'm, when you fast, you get confused. Uh, but uh, other traditions that are out there, and especially if you're from the Middle East, because majority of the Muslims are from the Middle East. Uh, in the Middle East, there's a tradition that firing the cannon. Back then, this is, this is an old tradition, but if you're from Lebanon, uh, Syria, Iraq, uh, some, some, sometimes in Iraq, um, you will find a cannon, an old cannon, that it's, uh, won't be fired today uh, because you know, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't really need that noise. Uh, we have a lot of wars going on, so we don't need to read that, uh, need those noises anymore. But the cannon was a sign that uh, time for iftar. So when iftar came, they didn't have like lar electricity for large speakers. So what they did, they fired the cannon to let everyone know that it's iftar time, uh, which is actually a, a very nice tradition. Uh, but I don't know where where the 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 cannonball would fall. Like, would it just fall somewhere else? But you know, I personally I've seen it in Lebanon. Uh, it's 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 a very nice tradition. Very a, a while ago. Uh, but uh, another thing that is is very nice, especially in the Middle East, is the drumming for sahur. Those in the West, uh, they're deprived. Uh, of this, uh, of, 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 of the noise, of the drumming. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, children, sometimes uh, old, uh, not very old, but adults or young kids, teenagers, 18, 17, uh, unless they walk around the streets, each neighborhood has two or three of them, they walk around the streets and they hit the drums and some of them sound like they're dancing. Uh, uh, in, in Iraqi, if <laughs> any Iraqi will, will, will get to know what I'm talking about. But uh, we have just received a voice message from. Farhad from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Here in Canada, my Ramadan is a little bit different from others. I live by myself. I have no family here. And I live far away from the mosques. So I mostly spend my Ramadan time, Ramadan days and nights alone by myself. And the good thing is that I have non-Muslim friends and I get the chance to answer a lot of questions about the fasting, Ramadan, and the iftari, the food that we start uh, break our Ramadan. So it's a good time here in Canada. This is mm -hmm. Farad Azizi from, Tur uh, from Tornhill, Canada. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Farhad, uh, for joining us tonight once again, and for everyone joining us. Um, we are getting a few Facebook comments. We'll get to read them out uh, later on in the show, inshallah. But, um, you know, spending Ramadan alone um, is, is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing. But, inshallah, in your case, it's a good thing because you're, you're um, spreading the message of Ramadan, which is very beautiful. And not a lot of people, it's, it's, uh, you're, you're, you're one of a kind uh, because not a lot of people get to do that. Uh, everyone gets to spend it, uh, you know, uh, in, in groups. But you're doing a bigger job uh, by telling everyone how there's sp or, or how Ramadan is, what Ramadan is, uh, and how people actually get to spend it, which is uh, a very uh, unique thing to do. Uh, but um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, in the third segment, if we were to go to the third segment of tonight's episode, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made Ramadan as one of the holiest month, if not the holiest month. Uh, throughout the year when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa, wa sallam was asked what are the holy months uh, he says Rajab is the month of Imam Ali Sha'ban is the month of Prophet Muhammad and Ramadan is the month of Allah now when he was asked why Ramadan was the month of Allah he gave a very long speech. I'm not going to read that speech out, but if we were just to focus on a few points from that speech, we would find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this month, as in the dua, shahrun azamtahu wa karramta. A month where you have elevated its status and made it filled with bounties and mercies. Uh, and, and you made it a generous month a month where, honestly, if a person gets to spend it properly, then he or she will receive a lot of mercies. And trust me when I say that, because Ramadan 
at the, when you're fasting, even for the poor ones, when you're fasting, and it's very nice, especially in Iraq and in the Middle East, um, they exchange foods. I have witnessed that for a couple of nights where the neighbors get to knock on your door, give you food. Even the poor in that neighborhood, people gather around. They call it Sala Ramadaniya, the basket of Ramadan. They gather food. Um, some people gather money. Um, they either give it on Eid or they give it before Ramadan begins so the family, the poor family, has food to cook. And trust me when I say, and I'm 100% I'm sure that everyone has witnessed this, the food that you get for Ramadan has a lot of barakah. Barakah meaning it has a lot of um, uh, blessings. Wow, I am really tired today. It has a lot of blessings within it. Where even how much you cook, it will last you longer than the usual. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed that not only in your food, but in the, in the entire month of Ramadan. So it's, it's, it's a very beautiful thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon His believers. But we did just get a text message from Zainab from Pakistan. She says, I'm celebrating Ramadan here by listening to many Islamic lectures. I've also started learning Arabic to understand the Quran and to make video presentations on various Islamic topics. Uh, thank you very much, Zainab, for joining. And, and uh, very nice uh, way you're spending Ramadan. It's, 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 it's actually nice because Ramadan... Uh, within it, it's it's one month across the year. You know, the entire year you get to celebrate, you get to have fun, you get to do whatever. Uh, but in Ramadan, it's it's a month of self-disciplining, where a person has to reflect on his personality, has to reflect on himself to see what wrongs he has done, and tries to make them right in this holy month. You know, as like a New Year's resolution. But uh, I just remembered what I had to say before. Another. Ramadan tradition that a lot of people do, and I know a few, a lot of people do this, it's called the Masafa uh, if, if If you know, uh, th th there's also a Fiqh uh, SOS uh, program on Al Hussein TV, you guys go, go check it out, they're probably talking about it uh, within these few days, uh, where a person, when, when he or she is fasting, he's able to break his fast on you know different uh, ways, but individuals, if they can't really bear the uh, fast or if they're sick and they don't want to break their siyam, they're fasting and you know fast for another 60 days as a punishment what they do is they go 22 kilometers break their fast and come back I'm not encouraging anyone to do that but this is this has become a tradition as well for some uh, to actually go and break their fast uh, but we just have received another text message from Razia from Norway uh, we've been spending Ramadan preparing for the final for the finals during uh, the days and iftar time we usually break it uh, with a date and a glass of smoothie uh, and then pray maghrib we eat after the prayers okay nice uh, nice very much thank you very much uh, from razia from norway she has participated as well your name has already been placed uh, in here uh, but we do we did Receive text message, but it's uh, we did just get received message from uh, my name is Mariam Rana. Uh, we do apologize we're not showing it on the camera uh, or on TV uh, because it's um, there's technical difficulty. But she says my name is Mariam Rana, uh, and in my country Pakistan, Ramadan is celebrated like a festival. In this month, people strive to be close to their lords, to the, to, to, to their loved ones. Uh, their families. This strengthens the family bond a lot. Work hours are reduced. Children get holidays from school. So the family spends a lot of quality time together. And when you turn on the TV everywhere, there are Ramadan trans transmissions. Wow, okay. Um, very beautiful. Thank you very much, uh, Mariam Rana, for joining us tonight. Um, I didn't get the chance to take out the pen, but Mariam Rana. Um, Mariam. Okay, thank you very much, Mariam. Um, your name? Oh, this one? All right. All right. Your name will be placed in the bowl. Um, now, the holy months of Ramadan um, can
can be celebrated in, 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 in many ways. You know, a lot of people think that you only have to spend Ramadan in worship, spend Ramadan, uh, you know, praying to the Lord, although it's, it's very beneficial during this month. But alongside your prayers, um, it's very important to observe that this month is a month where you get to help the poor. Uh, you get to reflect on the food that you're putting in front of you. For, for some, and I've been to uh, a, a, a few invitations, uh, where when it's time for iftar, a feast goes on. Like I'm not even getting a feast. You don't know what to eat, you don't know how much to eat, because the food is just a lot. If we reflect on that food and how much it can help the poor, we're not saying, you know, don't invite people and don't cook good food. No, 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 absolutely do it. But at the same time, we need to reflect because if that food goes in the garbage, then you're in big trouble because there are needy people in need of that food. So this month is the month of giving back, actually not taking in. Um, that's why we fast from dawn to dusk. Once again, thank you very much. That's it for tonight. There you have it. This is, what, this is how a lot of people around the world spend their Ramadan. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. This is Ahmed Ali coming to you live from the holy city of Karbala. Do stay tuned for the upcoming episodes at 2 a.m. Karbala time, 12 a.m. London time, 7 p.m. DC time. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.